Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. I do not usually film videos at 8.08. <laughs> 8.08 p.m. So the lighting is weird because I had to get out my ring light and I am downstairs because I am going to be wrapping the rest of my kids' Christmas gifts um, amidst dogs. They're going to be making appearances in here. Walter wants to say hi to you guys. He got a new sweater for Christmas and look at him. Here he is. He's a reindeer. He doesn't like the hood but look at his sweater he's so cute <laughs> so the dogs are going to be all over this video it's definitely going to be a casual one my kids are over at my brother and sister-in-law's house sleeping over and so jake who is right over behind the camera you want to say hi hello <laughs> he is assembling my nephew's um christmas gift which is like a fancy baby climber thing um, so Jake's building that over there. I'm over here. I've got my whole wrapping storage bin. I have all the kids gifts and I have questions from you guys on Instagram. I asked before I logged off of their, um, taking my break, I asked you guys, uh, what, were some questions you had for me and so I figured I would answer questions and wrap gifts. Um, I just wanted to explain why I'm downstairs where all the kids are. This is the last of the wrapping that I have to get done and tonight is the last night for me to do it. So I figure I'm probably not alone and there's probably a lot of you guys who need to wrap gifts as well. So maybe we can keep each other company and do that. Um, so yeah, you're gonna hear dogs walking around. You're probably gonna hear Jake in the background fiddling with the wood of the baby climber thing, but we will have a good time. So here's all the questions. I have quite a bit, as you can see. Um, these questions were submitted to me on November the 23rd, so I was planning ahead for my, in, uh, my Instagram hiatus. So we are going to start wrapping and chatting and obviously i'm not going to be able to answer all of the questions uh because there's a lot of them and i also will have to test my abilities on doing two things at once but the first thing i'm going to be wrapping is this lego creator three in one knight medieval castle set uh, that we got for landon for his something to make category um i've told you guys in my christmas tradition video how i do a piece of wrapping paper in the bottom of my kids stocking and then that lets them know like which gifts are theirs i wrap all their gifts in the same wrapping paper jake do you remember which one was landon's which paper because I, I put it in your drawer so yeah uh we so when we when we start wrapping gifts we rip off a piece of that and i put it in um a secret location because as you can tell by now i forget so while jake runs upstairs and grabs the wrapping paper code uh let's start with the question of how do i organize my week in order to have time for myself and work in my videos um and that question was from someone with the account Bilingual Little Sprouts. Uh, so how do I organize my week in order to have time for myself and work in my videos? Uh, every single week is like a Tetris puzzle by no exaggeration. And some weeks, here's the code. Here they are, so see their names. We're missing one. Uh-uh. I only have three. No, there's another one. It might just be smaller. There it is. Okay. So Landon is this paper. So we're gonna wrap his Lego in this paper. Okay. Um, so back to the question. Every week, my week looks different depending on what work I need to get done. And quite honestly, sometimes it is extremely overwhelming and not easy to manage at all. But what I find is that 
I have to be disciplined <laughs> and I have to seize opportunities. For instance, right now I necessarily wouldn't really want to be filming, you know, at eight o'clock or there's sometimes when I've done a lot of filming and I've worked hard to, and then like, I want to take a week off, but instead of taking a week off, I'll start working on content for the weeks ahead. Um, and so it's the discipline that I'm always having to do some work. Like, unless we go on a trip or something, then I'll give myself the total week off. But even if I'm like caught up on videos per se, I force myself. And I know that that sounds really ridiculous if you don't understand, but like, you know, sometimes you just want to do your day and you don't, you know, there's not, I don't want to get ready put, putting makeup on and I, you know, I don't want to pause to, you know, interact with the camera and things like that. And so, um, but what I've realized is that even, so once I get my work done, if I take like weeks off, then I'm going to be behind in the sense of, I'm trying to make this simple and there's just no simple answer to this question. I am pretty much done filming for December. This is like one of the last videos I have to film for the month of December right now. It is December the 11th when I am filming this. By the time you guys are gonna see this, it's gonna be later. But I am gonna be done with December's content by December 15th or so. And then I will take like a week off for Christmas, but the week after Christmas, even though it's still December and I don't need to be making any other videos, I'm going to have to start filming the videos then. For me, that's the hardest part. For me, that's the hardest part to find time for is how am I gonna fit in filming videos? The editing portion of this job, I do all at night when my family goes to bed. And so honestly, comes in the self-discipline again of, yeah, there's some nights I would rather veg out and like watch a show or, you know, do something like that. But instead of doing that, I have to edit my videos at night because I don't have time to do them during the day. So basically what I'm telling you is there's no one size fits all solution for how I fit in content. There's a bunch of different things that I do and systems that I've developed in order to be able to do this and to do it consistently and, um, and do it for as long as I have. So there's a lot that goes into it, a lot. Like I plan out all of the videos for the month coming the month before. So I already am thinking about what videos do I wanna put up on my channel ahead of the month. And then once I select those videos, then I will think about what sponsorships work well with which, with which videos, and then I'll plug those in. And then I make sure those work with the deadlines that the sponsors have given me. So there's a lot of planning involved. Then there is the component of when I sit down on Saturday or Sundays, when I look at my planner and I, uh, and I plan out like my school week and everything, then I will write in the, in my planner, what videos I have to film on Tuesday and what video I have to film on Wednesday. I really, really, really try to not have myself film a lot of videos during the school week. It stresses me out. There are certain videos that I enjoy filming like day in the life and those are doable in the school day because it's not like I need to sit down and talk to the camera quietly in my room for 20 to 30 minutes. So it just depends on what videos need to get filmed that week. Um, sometimes if my weekends allow for it, which has not been the case recently, I try to film on the weekends. Uh, sit down videos or um, like reviews or updates, anything where I'm like sitting in my bedroom talking to you guys, chances are I film that on the weekend. And so each week I really have to assess, just like if I worked in an office outside of my house, I would have to, I would have to assess like what are my priority tasks for this day and that is what I work on. So to answer your question, how do I fit it in? Every week it is a different ball game. Every week it takes a tremendous amount of planning and every week it takes a lot of self-discipline to uh, have myself um, 
be up at night when I may prefer to not be doing it or have myself be thinking ahead when I would rather have a week off. And that is just the honest truth of it all. Uh, time for myself as far as, I think you're talking about exercise because that's really like the only thing that I do for myself. That is also a Tetris puzzle and does not come easy and takes a lot of dedication and sacrifice. And I do the same thing with that. I plan my workouts the week ahead and I have to work out. It's critical for my mental health, my physical health, and just me feeling good. And so if it comes down to going and having you know doing something that is going to take away my workout time i seriously consider that so uh i've shared with you guys in the past when i work out and stuff and um it's not at my desirable time but it's the time that works well and so what i have to do is i just have to not overwhelm myself with other things until i've homeschooled my work and working out and that is literally all the time i have in a day i i really have no additional time for i have no time for wasting is what i'm saying so that was a very long and chaotic answer to your question but i hope that helps landon's first gift is wrapped i'm gonna need a sharpie will you grab me one jake um so that i can write on the side of the box uh where or make i mean so the next question is, am I closer to my father's side of the family or my mother's? Um, if you guys have been around for a while, you know that I have, thank you, I have, um, I don't have a relationship with my mom or my dad. And I wouldn't say that I am closer to one side of the family or the other. There are people on both sides that I am uh, close with, but I would say my closest relative to me personally outside of my brother is probably my grandma on my dad's side of the family. Um, that's probably who I would consider to be like my closest relative and, and that's my dad's mom. So uh, thoughts on out school. Um, I don't really know too much about out school other than I have a friend who teaches some classes on there and she really likes it as the teacher. Um, let's see. Parenting. Do I have any strong willed children? <laughs> Jake, do we have any strong willed children? They're all strong -willed. They are all strong willed. I would say, I would say three out of the four are extremely strong willed. And if you watch my channel, you probably know who the, the fourth one is that is not as strong-willed as the other three. Um, so if you know, make a guess down below. We'll see if you, if you get it right. Okay, so make is done. I wrapped one gift and I've been filming for 13 minutes. This is horrible. Uh, next up, I am going to wrap. Jake's also going to help me wrap. I'm going to wrap Olivia's Disney Beauty and the Bell Lego set. How cute is this? Um, Olivia's wrapping paper is this Santa uh, like Christmas red one. So we're going to wrap this, and I will answer another question for you guys. Um, what is my favorite book in the Bible for finding peace? That is such a great question. I think it really depends on the person, but for me personally, this is gonna sound, hor like I already know this is gonna sound so weird. Um, do you have a favorite book for finding peace? Revelation. No, <laughs> I was about to say, we are two peas in a pod. What is yours? Uh, John. John. So Jake says John. Mine is, um, Probably, probably the Psalms or Romans or the book of Job. And this is why I was going to say this is going to sound weird. I find comfort in knowing that um, people have suffered worse than I ever will. And I find comfort and peace in in seeing people who have walked through and lived through 
like way worse things than I am currently facing that is disrupting my peace, um, I find comfort in that. So when I read the book of Job and I just read like the, how he's crying out to the Lord and all of the suffering that he endured, yet he was still so faithful and, and never wavered in his faith, but also was honest with God, like that brings me peace to know that number one, whatever I'm going through is not, I'm not going through it because I have a lack of faith or I'm not struggling with it because I have a lack of faith. Um, that people who had tremendous faith in scripture also struggled. And, and so I find peace from being reminded that since humanity began, there has been trouble and there always will be. And um, I just, that comforts me, which I know sounds super weird. So maybe you like you, uh, Jake's answer, the book of John might be better for you. I know that that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's just how I am. Uh, perspective is what it gives me. Um, okay, still going to Walt Disney World in January. Yes, we are still going and super excited. Um, I know it seems kind of crazy that we're gonna go on such a big vacation after the, after Christmas, but um, why are you giggling? The sweater? No, this dog. Oh. So I know it seems kind of crazy to be going on such a large vacation right after Christmas, but this has been something we've been planning for what, a year? Yep. Oh. No, before. Before, like longer than a year, and we chose this time um, because it's right after my nephew's first birthday and also um, we chose it because it's a slower time at Disney World. So um, that is why we are going in December or in the end, the end of January. Um, next one is what do I use for my Bible study mom time and devotions? I use different things all the time, but I've really been focused on just reading scripture and having like one additional book that I'm also reading. So I'm getting ready to read a new John MacArthur study on the, uh, I think it's like 12 amazing women from the Bible or something like that. Uh, that'll be my next one that I start after New Year's, but I've just been needing and desiring to just read scripture and I haven't been uh, really wanting to do like devotions or anything else. Um, so that's what I've been doing lately. On this cold December day, we are on our merry way, riding along, just singing a song, barreling through the snow. Bells are jingling, snowflakes tingling, Rudolph knows where to go. On this cold December day, I am piloting my. Um, Bellway, can you only take it in the morning? No, you can take it anytime you want. That's a fiber supplement I recommend. Uh, the next question is, do I keep all of my kids' school worksheets and workbooks from the year or pitch them? Um, I save their special things and then, that's done, that's good. And then I just recycle the rest. Um, let's see, next question. Yeah, just write make small. Um, am I going to repeat the good and the beautiful history? I actually did or am doing, depending on when I post it, a whole video on history about that, so go watch it. I answer your question in that video. Um, this next question is, I love the music on your videos. Do you seek out singer, songwriters, copyrights? Um, thank you. I really spend a lot of time trying to find good music for my videos. Um, and honestly, it's hard. It's sometimes that's the part that takes the longest is finding the music. 
Um, I just use a service called Epidemic Sound and I look for certain types of music. So I usually go toward acoustic um, as like the genre and then I filter through it. And honestly, that's what takes me the longest is finding music and that is where all of my music comes from. Um, next question is, um, how to respond when my child says they want to go to school. My son who asked is six. I've answered this question before um, in many other Q and A's. So I'm assuming that you're a new viewer. So I want to, I want to answer in a way that is not like um, harsh, but sometimes I come off that way. I'm not meaning to come off that way. Um, but I would just ask you if you allow your six-year-old to make life-altering decisions for themselves. So like if your six-year-old wants to eat candy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, are you going to allow them to do that no matter how much they complain, kick and scream, or whine? The answer is no. And scripture has given us the authority over our parent, over our children. And this is one of those areas in my house where I listen to my kids so that they feel understood and heard. But at the end of the day, my parental decisions, I am held accountable for those things. And I do not believe that our children have the emotional, spiritual, or mental maturity, definitely at the age of six, to make such a huge choice as to where they go to school. So I would just ignore it basically and if it continues on then i would have a conversation with them age appropriately about why you've chosen to educate in a different way otherwise say oh i'm really sorry that you want to go to um, public school mommy just has decided that that is not the best for you and so i this is just what we're gonna do like that's how much time and attention i would give it and then i would be done with it um next question this is such a good question and oh my gosh it says what are my dreams and plans for after my homeschooling days are done and my kids are grown mm -hmm. oh my gosh i don't even have an answer for you that is just me being totally truthful and honest i really struggle uh, to think about what life is going to be like when my kids are out of the house and to be quite honest with you, it's not a season that I am looking forward to. I'm like mourning it before it's already begun. And it has nothing to do with the fact that like, you know, it's just, it's not a time that I'm excited about. So I honestly do not know. I have no idea what my hopes and dreams are for when my kids are out of the house. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. And that I, I'm just praying that I make it through that season, to be honest. I know I will. Jake and I were just talking about this the other day about how God gives us the grace we need to make it through situations, but he doesn't ever give us that grace ahead of time. It's always when you're in it and you need it, the Lord meets you. And so I will be fully trusting and relying on that because that is not something I am looking forward to. Uh, the next question is, which child was my easiest pregnancy? Jake is rapping. If you're wondering why I am just sitting here talking to you guys, there he is. He's wrapping those gifts. Um, which, which child do you think was my easiest pregnancy? Landon? Really? No, I don't know. My easy. Kylie? No. No, but you have no, no responsibility. Yeah, but I felt awful with her. The worst, yeah, actually. You worked with Caleb. My easiest pregnancy was Caleb. I did not work when Caleb was when I was pregnant oh, with him. It was after, yeah. Yeah. My easiest pregnancy was my second pregnancy with my son Caleb. Hey. Um, I got pregnant with him when Kylie, my oldest daughter, was only five months old. Or that's when I found out. Um, so four months. And so anyway, it was a huge shock. And I was not excited in the moment that I found out. I was like completely 
terrified actually, but that was actually my, my easiest pregnancy was with him and um, he was the one that I felt the best and uh, I didn't have any, I mean I had like nausea and stuff, but I never actually got sick when I was pregnant with him. I didn't have any like preterm labor stuff with him just one time um, where I went to labor and delivery and I actually like, they gave me a shot to kind of slow down my contractions and then I was good to go. Um, so yeah, Caleb, my second one was my easiest pregnancy. I am now wrapping Kylie, my oldest daughter's um, wireless headphones, which were her, was her something, I don't even remember. I, good thing I keep Need? notes in my phone. Need? Cause she runs without. No, we got her the cleats oh. for Need. I think what I decided was I was gonna put this in her Birthday. stocking. Oh. Once, cause once I realized she needed cleats. Let's well, see. Merry Christmas, Kylie. Specific amount of gifts or a specific price amount. Um, we do the something you want, something you need, something to wear, something to read, and we add on something to make, and then Santa also brings a gift. Um, do I do the same Christmas theme on my tree every year? Yes. I'm not somebody who like changes every ornament um, on the tree. Favorite thing to cook on the Traeger? My husband just got one. Mm. Come on, Jake. Favorite thing to cook? Come into the light. There you go. What's your favorite thing to cook? Uh, the brisket. That's and your the, favorite? No, um, fajitas was pretty fun. Fajitas. Jake made fajitas for my, they can't see me. Tell them oh. what you made. I made uh, chicken fajitas. How'd you do it? Uh, chicken breast, some taco seasoning, dry rub. Traeger and, dry rub. But what's that skillet? It's the Dutch oven, what is it called? Yeah, Dutch oven. I diced all the vegetables and peppers, onions, and olive oil and put it in the big Dutch oven. Mm -hmm. Got my grill super hot and it turned out really good. Did, how long did you cook the chicken? I just normal like chicken breast till it's 165. So Jake finds the Traeger app to be really helpful. This was all me though. This I know me. you made this one up, but when you first started the Traeger app, and yeah. we still use it, um, it just gives you some. This is just going to be stocking because okay. it's extra. Um, it gives you some good ideas and times. So definitely have him download the Traeger app just to follow those recipes. We cooked two Thanksgiving turkeys on the Traeger. Those were, those were delicious, like much, much better than an oven uh, roasted turkey. Um, we've done- But the most fun is probably the pulled pork. Pulled pork is delicious, but I can't eat yeah. pork. It upsets my stomach so, every single time, and it has nothing to do with the way he cooks it because it's yeah. cooked to perfection. It's just I can't digest it uh, for the, whatever reason. The chicken thighs turn out pretty. I make those pretty good too. Chicken thighs are really good. So basically so, everything, everything you're gonna cook on the Traeger is delicious. Yeah. The, what are, what's because that steak. recipe is on the Traeger app. What's that one? Chili lime. Chili lime salsa with chicken thighs. Okay, yeah. so look up chili, green chili or chili lime. I, we don't know. Chili lime chicken thighs on the Traeger app. It's like green looking and it is super yeah, good. Yeah, it's a homemade salsa. Yeah, it's favorite. really delicious. She asked what the favorite thing is. That, like, man. we can't narrow it down. Yeah, that's a lot, um, sorry. How something you couldn't do last year that I can do this year. I don't know what that means. Wait, some I could do last year and not this year? Oh, like a skill I learned, like something I couldn't do last year that I can uh -oh. do this year. Is that what you would think that yeah. means? Um, I don't know. Well, we, you got me the Traeger last year, so I can smoke meat now. So Jake <laughs> could not cook last year, and this no, year he can freaking. cook. And I like it. Um, what's, what would you say for me? Something I couldn't do last year that I can do this year. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. There has to be stuff. I mean, I'm always learning new things. I don't know. Did you learn a new skill? <laughs> I've learned a lot. You've learned how to take care of a hot tub. Okay.
okay. I learned how to take care of a hot tub. There we go. I also learned so much about uh, the government and um, politics and just the functions of different roles. That's something I couldn't do. Uh, I also can quote from memory a lot more scripture than I could last year. That's something, not to say that I couldn't do it, but that I didn't, I didn't know. Um, what else? I am... You're good at the RV trailer. Yeah, I can do can RV trailering. <laughs> and you can empty the tanks. I can empty black and gray tanks. I could not do that last year. Um, okay, let's see. This is a great question. You seem to genuinely enjoy that chess set right there. It can be in this one. So we got the kids a new chess set because they like to play that. And uh, so we have like a wrapping paper for that. Uh, so Jake's going to work on that one. Um, I seem to genuinely enjoy my children. Always the case or did a change occur? Huh? No? No change. No change. I love my kids. I love being a mom. It's truly what I knew I was going to do um, from the time I was very, very young. I, it, It's always what I said when people ask me what I wanted to be when I grow up. Um, that doesn't mean that my kids are not bad and and that some days I am not exhausted as a mom because I am. There's some days I am so mentally depleted after dealing with teenage drama and preteen drama and fighting and bickering and harsh words spoken. I'm just, I'm done. That's not to say that. So I do need to say that. But I do enjoy my kids. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with just my perspective on my children i truly view it as like the greatest blessing of all time to be able to have them and i know that the lord has entrusted me with that work and i take it really seriously uh there's definitely times of their lives that i've enjoyed more but i find myself enjoying it more and more because i realize and in living how quickly it's gone. And uh, even though I'll always be their mom, it's just this time of life where they're all with me and they're all here and we get to do everything together. Those days are short lived in the grand scheme of things. And so I also have that perspective, which drives me to appreciate being with them even more. So um, what did you say, tips? I would say, uh, oh, you said, was that always the case or did a change occur? I would say it's always been the case. I've always loved being a mom. I've always loved being with my kids. And uh, you wrote mom of, mom of five, two and a newborn. Um, so yeah, your hands are full. And I remember those days and there were days that I was just so tired and I needed a day to myself or, you know, just, those days were hard because I had four under four, so I'm not like minimizing that. Um, but I did enjoy my kids then too. And now that I have teenagers, I would do anything to go back and have to brush all their teeth again. <laughs> that used to be the thing, like at the end of the night, like, oh my gosh, I have four mouths of teeth to brush because none of them could brush their teeth effectively on their own. So Jake and I would have to tag team their teeth and uh, I remember just like thinking, wow, that's a lot of teeth to clean. Um, now, let's see, the next question. What makeup do I wear? You are always so flawless. You are very sweet, thank you so much. Always I, flawless? He's so rude, do you hear this guy? Always flawless. I did your makeup. Okay, I'm flawless unless Jake has a makeup brush in his hand. Um, very kind, very sweet. I, um, I'm trying to think. I don't wear makeup every day. I really only wear makeup a few times a week. And I have started to wear makeup 
more when I'm filming than I did before. I don't always wear it, but I do try to wear it more and here's why. I look at my videos when I like have no makeup on my face and I'm just like, wow, I cannot believe I let thousands of people look at me like that. Like it's just not, everybody looks a little bit better when, I don't know, it's just my opinion. So I have started to wear makeup more, but not all the time. And um, compact Bibles, maybe those are to give out. Jake's opening a package. <laughs> right next to me yes that's Kylie's uh, I will it's I wear simple makeup I will have to do a get ready with me um, my foundation is it cosmetics I use like Milani um, highlighter it's too, it's too many things to list but I will do a video um, showing you guys all the products soon uh, the next question, when am I moving to Texas? Ha ha, uh, she says, just kidding, I love your content, thanks for being you. Well, thank you for being here. I would love to join you in the great state of Texas. I love all things that Texas stands for. Oh, that's so annoying that their Bibles are small. Oh, is it not supposed to be? No. Because they have good eyes. It's that, is horrible. All right, the next question is, what time do I get up in the morning? I get up between six and 6.30 on school mornings. And then the last question I'm going to answer is, what do I watch on YouTube besides other homeschool moms? And this question made me crack up because I have a choice here to be honest or to be dishonest, and I am going to tell you the honest truth. Besides other homeschooling moms, I really enjoy watching um, for a laugh the Dad Challenge podcast uh, videos, um, particularly his Snarkmas videos where he basically um, pokes fun and sometimes he's a little harsh on, um, you know, like, certain YouTubers and it makes me laugh and that is like my guilty pleasure. Um, I also sometimes, I, I'm very sensitive. Like I can't listen to crime podcasts or true crime channels. Um, so I can't really do that very often, but if there is like a, a high profile case that I'm interested in hearing more about, I will sometimes watch a girl um, her channel is called Christina Randall. Um, I watch her. She is not a homeschool mom. I watch Brittany Morrow. She's not a homeschool mom. I watch the Wad Squad sometimes. She's not a homeschool mom. She's hilarious. Um, I watch Amy Darley sometimes for cleaning motivation. She's not a homeschool mom. And that's about the extent of it. I truly do not watch, uh, and then John MacArthur sermons. So just round all that out with a John MacArthur sermon. <laughs> because yeah, that's, that's, that's what I watch on YouTube. If I'm not um, watch, like watching other homeschool content or like friends of mine on here, that's what I, what I watch. Um, so that's gonna be it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed wrapping gifts with me. I hope you got some gifts wrapped as well. And thanks for listening to my answers and just keeping me company as I wrap. I hope you guys are having a fun lead up to Christmas. It's almost here. So if you haven't got all your wrapping done, I hope you are able to check a few more off your list. But I will see you all in my next video really soon. Bye guys. On this cold December day, we are on our merry way. Barreling through the snow Bells are jingling, snowflakes tingling Rudolph knows where to go On this cold